The deadline is passed. Jonathan Taylor is still an Indianapolis Colt. Kind of. Let's get into it. So Adam Schefter with the news. No deal. Indianapolis did not find what it felt was a fair value offer for Jonathan Taylor and is not trading its all pro running back today. What matters most for us is that Jonathan Taylor will still end up and stay on the physically unable to perform list, making him ineligible to play the first four games of the season. That is against the Jaguars, the Texans, the Ravens, and the Rams. Hayden, this was a deadline just on the Colts end. He can still be traded, but now, no matter what, he is going to miss the first four games for whatever team he's on their roster. This was the worst case scenario by far, not just because he's missing the first four games, but also it's showing how stubborn the Colts are by not accepting the best offer, how stubborn they are to not getting him a middle ground type of deal that Jonathan Taylor wants to play on. And it shows the stubbornness on Jonathan Taylor for not going to be pushing through this ankle injury. Initially, it was Jim Ursay. Everybody said this was a minor procedure. They thought he was fully healthy. Adam Schefter called this contract-itis. This is two teams, both the Colts and Jonathan Taylor, who are stubborn enough to yeah. hold out and miss time. Maybe, maybe the Dolphins or somebody else comes and makes an offer in the middle of the season. I fear that Jonathan Taylor is not going to play that much football this year and that the Colts are going to have to part ways with him later on. I moved him down significantly in my rankings. This was the worst case scenario. Okay, we'll re-rank and re-tier all the running backs in a moment. It just naturally happens the day after we post our running back tiers. But we brought up this possibility. First, I am totally with you that it's very clear by his actions, signing with a new agent, everything that has transpired this last month, that Jonathan Taylor like simply is not going to play for the Colts again. And maybe we'll be wrong in that. Maybe they do have a change of heart. But I'm with you where we have seen Josh Jacobs get slightly more money. Saquon Barkley, Austin Eckler, Jim Mercer just wasn't going to do that point blank period. The Dolphins were very interested. There was another mystery team that had made offers as well. But as we have seen this offseason, massive running back contracts simply will not be given out. And that was going to have to be part of the deal, which likely lowered the compensation for a franchise that just, you know, I don't know, a decade ago paid yeah. a first round pick for Trent Richardson. So Hayden, if it's not Jonathan Taylor in this backfield, it is a backfield that now is loaded with Zach Moss coming off a broken arm. Deion Jackson, who has started in the past, but is more of a receiving option. Evan Hull as a rookie, someone and everyone out there is going to say, who is the running back handcuff? Who is now the value? Is there one? I think Zach Moss was going to be the guy before his broken arm. We'll see if Zach Moss is going to miss the first couple games. If he's ready, we don't know. Until then, I think it's going to be Evan Hull and Deion Jackson. Plus, if there's going to be some other movement, it's cut down day right now. Maybe there's a little bit of movement on other depth charts. I think it's not going to be one guy. And even if it was one guy, one of the reasons why you and I were way below consensus on Jonathan yes. Taylor before all this contract stuff came up was this is an offense that's not going to be using its running backs in the traditional ways that score fantasy points. Goal line carries are going to go down because the Colts offense is going to be pretty whack. And Anthony Richardson is impossible to tackle and is that has in inaccuracy issues. He's not going to throw the court, the running backs anyways. So I don't think we're going to be that pumped to start any of these Colts no. running backs. In fact, I think the biggest winners here are like the Dolphins backs. I have Jeff Wilson as my like running back 35. I have Raheem Moster like as kind of like in the 140s range. I draft both of them. I'm trying to load up on as much Jeff Wilson as possible. The Colts guys, I guess I would pick up Zach Moss. There's a chance that he's not going to be ready for a couple weeks anyways. Before we re-rank, and we'll do those re-tiers live here on this video, there's different tierings and sections of running back handcuffs. And it's why in preseason, you don't just draft every running back two behind elite running backs because oftentimes when they get to that second running back that that team has to play for, in-house, they are not confident in it, and they just pull someone else off the street. We've seen that constantly. In fact, it might happen in Indianapolis when I think just last week, two weeks ago, they showed interest in Kareem Hunt. Um, that is an outside chance here. I know everyone's getting really excited in Evan Hall, and he's gotten some first-team run in this preseason, and he has like a nice combination of 
athleticism and pass catching ability and all that type of stuff. And maybe, maybe that happens. Mm-hmm. And we're going to record our quarterback tiers later on too. But man, this just makes the entire Colts offense more difficult as well yeah. in terms of structurally and successfully how it's going to take the field. Because as we've seen with Shane Sykin and the Philadelphia Eagles, the running game was so crucial in order to force mm-hmm. single high coverage and then to take those vertical shots on the outside without John Taylor and all those names that we just yeah. mentioned and maybe even someone else on the roster. It's not possible. Okay. Should we reorder first? Let's kick it off with where Jonathan Taylor should even be drafted. I will tell you this, no matter where we rank him, I am simply not going to draft Jonathan Taylor at this point. Yeah, I moved him right by Aaron Jones, which would be around RB21, RB20. Would you rather have him versus James Conner, for example? Like James Conner, we know, is not going to have a ceiling. Cam right. Akers, DeAndre Swift, right. these guys don't have a ceiling. At least you can paint a picture where Jonathan Taylor makes amends with somebody, gets traded, and now he starts popping off. So I think that he should be drafted somewhere before, like Isaiah Pacheco and all that stuff. But I mean, Hayden, is it is it the worst idea? And again, I do not think that Jonathan Taylor plays for the Indianapolis Colts again. And if they do not accept a trade. He might set out the entire season. They would then have to re-tag him in order to get any compensation for him or else he walks away. So with that in mind, should we not put him next to Alvin Kamara, who is also missing the first three games of the season? Well, I think with Alvin Kamara, we know he's going to be on the Saints, and that's more or less a committee for me and the capped offense, in my opinion. So I still think there's some avenues where Jonathan Taylor's the guy, but the floor is obviously significantly lower. So this is like hard to distinguish between redraft and best ball. And redraft, I think the easiest thing is just like pretend Jonathan Taylor doesn't exist. Right. And best ball, as his price completely craters, I do think there is a point where you should be drafting him. Real quick on the CBA, he needs six games to accrue a season. He must accrue a season because that's how you get to free agency by being placed on the PUP list. He still is accruing four of the games. Every single time you're on the PUP list, you are accruing games. That still means he has to be either on the PUP list or actually playing games. If he does this contract itis thing, they could put him on the NFI list. That would be a no, no. So I think Jonathan Taylor somehow has to either remain on the PUP list, keep limping around on this angle, or he actually has to play. Maybe it's for a couple snaps just to get, get over it. But the floor is is non-existent. So in redraft leagues, you don't you just want you have one league and you just want to forget he exists. I don't blame you. I think in best ball there is a point, and it might be in this upside RB three range, even beyond RB twenty. But then I'm not even going to get him if that's where I want to take him. You know, because right now his ADP is at running back nine. I don't think he's going to make it all the way down to running back twenty nine, which is where Alvin Kamara is. Even where you had him, that was what running back twenty one. I highly doubt anyone in your draft room is going to allow Jonathan Taylor, the name to drop from running back nine to running back 21. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've no idea what, how people so are going to react. The here. spin to do this then and to take advantage of it is exactly what you said with Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert, because when we post this video and thank you so much for everyone that watched it, Jeff Wilson was being drafted as running back 51 and Raheem Mostert is running back 47. We ranked Jeff Wilson here on this tier list as running back 36, and Raheem Mostert as running back 44. So way above on Jeff Wilson, who we have not seen during this preseason. Another one of these values that Mike McDaniel traded for this past season has a history of and is both a physical player and can create explosives on his own too. I think the Dolphins, because defenses are adjusting to that unique passing offense they had, they are going to have to run the football. So I do think Jeff Wilson, like he's not that much different to me than like the Khalil Herberts and Rashad Whites, maybe a little bit below Rashad White. But I do think that this is a, the price range where you can be drafting him. And for week one, I do think he's going to project fairly well. Will he be able to yeah. hold on to that role with A-Chain potentially coming on later in the season? We'll see. But I do think that Jeff Wilson has a role here. I only had one other note that I wanted to get to. Just talking about the difference between Jonathan Taylor's situation, these other running back holdouts like what Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley had, and the only way that you can actually hold out is playing or faking or whatever the way you want to call this. Exaggerating. An injury. Exaggerating an inju- injury. Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley didn't have that. Jonathan Taylor could hide behind that. Right, and and he did have surgery. Right. But, you know, we cite these medical professionals that, constantly know way more than we do about this and they all say by this point in the calendar he should be fully healthy 
it's such we haven't really seen a situation quite like this because this is even different than like the levy on bell stuff but you know the outcome truly might be the same okay there's your update i'm not drafting jonathan taylor it stinks i really wanted to see him on the field and it makes me very much more wary of this colts offense without him for sure out there even you know starting in week five okay we're going to post our quarterback tiers video a bit later tonight, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. All positions this week, you know the drill. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the rest of the content. Up the bill. We'll talk to you guys in just a little bit. See you.